in the crossfire Let's call it in the crossfire Baby, wag ka nang matalilangan pa Alam mo naman talaga na kailangan ka Matulad mo ay matag... Hi guys! Welcome to our YouTube channel And what's up mga kakeme? Kakeme-keme sa Biochemistry So, ayan nga, ipapakilala ko sa inyo ang groupmates ko Hi groupmates! By the way, I am Bernice Jean C. Cloveria. And I'm Rizal Marin G. Gamad. And I'm Jessarela Santa Ulep. And I'm Israel D. Gatio. I'm Lawrence Julian Simangan. And we are your Kakeme Keme sa Biochemistry. By the way, guys, we are here pala to execute our vlog sa mga love experiments namin na pinapagawa ng aming magandang prof, Ma'am Jinky. So, we are here to be your guide. Chara! Drop it. Diffusion is the net movement of molecules or ions from region of higher solute concentration to a region of low solute concentration. In biochemistry, diffusion allows the movement of essential solutes in and out of the cell membrane. It is said that in higher temperature, diffusion rate increases because the kinetic energy of solute molecules also increases in its movement in the solution. Let us compare diffusion rate among two variations of temperature. First, fill two 250 ml beakers with 100 ml of water each. Next, warm the content of one beaker. Now, place the two beakers side by side and drop at the same time 2 to 3 crystals of potassium permanganate into each beaker. Now, 
Let us observe and compare the rate of diffusion of the solute. A few moments later Eventually Meanwhile Osmosis is considered as the counterpart of diffusion. It is the movement of solvent particles across a region of dilute or lower solute concentration to a saturated or higher solute concentration until the concentration of the two regions reaches equilibrium. Cells use osmosis as a way to maintain its internal environment and react to changes in its external environment. Let us try to simulate osmosis. Let us start by filling the bowl of the tube with 30% sugar solution until it reaches 10 cm in the tissue tube stem. Make sure that you cup the stem of the tissue tube with a finger. Next, cover the large end of the tissue tube with cellophane and tie it using a rubber band. Turn the tissue tube upside down and suspend the tissue tube in a 500 ml beaker with distilled water. Situate that the level of the sugar solution coincides with that of the water outside the tissue tube. Now, let us measure with the ruler the level of the sugar solution every 30 minutes for 2 hours. Now, let us proceed to the third membrane transport process, dialysis. Dialysis is the process of separating molecules on the basis of their size in a semi-permeable membrane. It applies the force produced by diffusion and the filtering capacity of a membrane. Cells use dialysis because cell membrane contains pores, also called membrane proteins, which limits large molecules to pass through, including proteins. Let us simulate dialysis that is being used by the cells, and afterwards, let us test for the presence of proteins and any other large molecules. And in this case, let us use milk as the sample. Let us start by soaking 1 square foot of cellophane in water for a few minutes. Afterwards, fold it like a filter paper and fit it in a glass funnel. Now, pour 50 ml of milk in it. Collect all the edges of the cellophane and tie the cellophane with a string to secure it. Leave some air space above the milk. Place the bag into a 500 ml beaker and suspend it so that it almost touches the bottom. Add distilled water to the beaker. Make sure that it is at an equal level with the surface of the milk. For one hour, stir the water outside the milk and let the milk dialyze. Dialysis is undergoing if the water outside the milk is turning colloidal or turning white in appearance. After one hour, collect the dialysate. 
Let us test for the presence of proteins and sugar in the dialysate. For protein testing, pipe it 1 ml of the dialysate and place it in a test tube. Then, add 1 ml of 25% trichloroacetic acid solution. The presence of white precipitate or turbidity will appear if proteins are present. Now, let us test for sugar. Combine 1 ml of Felix A and 1 ml of Felix B in a test tube and heat it in a boiling water bath. Add 1 ml of the dialysate and continue to boil for 1 to 2 minutes. A yellow or red precipitate indicates the presence of sugar.